A woman is lying in the middle of the road when a car approaches. Before it reaches her she stands and moves aside. The driver of the car pulls up next to her and offers to take her somewhere. Lisa and Adam are the names they exchange. She observes that he has a crucifix tattooed on his hand. As they converse, Lisa says that today would have been Nina's ninth birthday and that she had passed away. When Lisa finally switches on the radio, she hears a report about a man who has killed two people. Lisa recognizes Adam, who slams on the brakes and throws Lisa against the dashboard, as the man described in the report with the cross tattoo on his right hand. Lisa awakens in a cramped space with odd lights on the walls and what appears to be no exit. She is wearing an odd gizmo on her wrist that emits a yellow light. After some time, a door opens to reveal a short tunnel. The door closes behind Lisa as she crouches down to enter the tunnel. The alarm from the gadget on her wrist sounds, and a countdown timer flashing 11 minutes appears. As Lisa makes her way through the tunnel, she has to overcome a number of challenges, including a surprisingly small opening that she must squeeze through a platform that gradually rises and nearly pins her against the ceiling, and a rotting body that is in the way and breaks apart as she tries to move it. The device on her wrist starts to glow red and count down from 60 when the passage in front of her gets blocked. A part of the wall behind her suddenly opens, and tubes that are lining the walls start to appear to be heating up. As a glass wall encloses her and the tunnel behind her is filled with flames, she hastily scrambles into the area. When she finally hears a man screaming out, she has made it across a part that is flooded with water and an acid pit with only a tiny ledge on either side to crawl through. She discovers a barrier between herself and the man in front of her, as well as an unobstructed section of tunnel, which separates them. The man's long hair and beard suggest that he has been at this location for a while, and it is obvious that he is going insane. Both of their barriers lift simultaneously when a part of the tunnel between them breaks up revealing fire tubes along the walls. They then rush to the safe area. After some scuffle, Lisa prevails and drags the man into the tunnel. His arm, which was attached to the apparatus, is severed when the glass barrier collapses. As the fire fills the tunnel, she notices a tattoo of a cross on the hand and recognizes it was Adam, who is being burned alive. She then collapses. She awakens in the same secure location. She is healed by a mechanical tentacle hooked to a skull that descends from the ceiling. Then, as it clings to a piece of her suit, Lisa has a flashback of Adam stabbing her, stabbing her and falling from the automobile, and seeing an odd light in the sky. She exits the safe area and leaves with Adam's arm in tow. As she looks at Adam's arm, she notices three markings underneath the gadget linked to it. A diamond, a cross, and a diamond. Suddenly, she is forced to hurriedly retreat as a whirling blade appears in front of her. She just about makes it into the tunnel above. A passageway above her opens, and a weird being follows her into the tunnel and lies motionless behind her. She crawls through a narrow passageway in the tunnel that it cannot fit through as it starts pursuing her. Although severely charred, it has a human appearance. Its eyes are white and glossed over. It is Adam, reanimated in some way as shown by the absence of an arm. As she approaches a stretch with two tunnels to select from, she attempts to decide which to take while recalling the markings on Adam's arm. She makes the left decision and hears Nina, her daughter, speaking. Following the voice, Lisa enters a room that is starkly white and filled with pictures of Lisa's life, including her as a baby gazing up at her father and watching her daughter die after falling from a window. Above her, the charred Adam thing materializes enters the space, and chases after her via a tunnel. Although the tunnel is lined with razor-sharp wire, the end is a bright, overcast sky. To get away from the beast, Lisa has no choice except to shove her way through the wires, severely hurting herself in the process. Just a few feet from freedom, she is finally unable to move. In the same room where she fell asleep, she awakens. She draws the symbols she had seen in blood on the wall for someone else to find after her despite her severe injuries. As she wipes the symbols off the wall, the skull comes and starts to heal her, but she tells it she wants to die. It is about to inject her, ostensibly to put her to death, when Lisa realizes she has only partially removed the markings. Instead of two diamonds and a cross, 
there were six arrows pointing in different directions. After telling the skull to stop, she resumes her journey feeling renewed. The same challenges are no longer a problem for her because she has learned how to handle them. When she gets to the acid pit, she burns off the wrist device's clasp to reveal her own markings underneath. Two crosses and a diamond indicating the right turns. When Lisa approaches the tunnel split, the thing starts pursuing her once more. She throws her removed device down one tunnel to entice the creature, then takes the other. She finds a mysterious biological door that opens to a space that resembles a womb. As she enters, she notices odd, maybe extraterrestrial, animals moving on the opposite side of the womb's walls. She exits the womb through a different entrance and walks into a chamber that looks like it did, where she finds her wrist device on the floor and the creature trapped in the door in front of her. She carefully goes to fetch the object, but when she does, an alarm goes off, rousing the creature, which then pursues her once more. They enter a tunnel where fire tubes again line the walls. When Lisa sneaks inside the secure room, the glass drops, but this time there is no fire, so it opens again, pushing her back into the tunnel with the creature. The wall forces them both into the main tunnel as she struggles with it and rests her foot on its head. It gets killed when its head is slammed against the wall. Lisa navigates via the marking on her wrist. She eventually discovers Nina having fun with a ball. She informs her that she needs to go another route after realizing that her daughter is not her. She receives a hug in the daughter's words, I'm proud of you, Lisa. We are, she says before leaving. A last tunnel, with three blades descending at faster intervals, is entered by Lisa. She completes the first, which is given every four seconds, every three. She manages to get by the second. Every two is the third, which seems inconceivable. The exit with a clear blue sky is right up ahead. She pushes herself to attempt with determination and comes close, but her foot is split in two. Weak from blood loss, she scrambles to the door and discovers it to be nothing more than a screen playing a video of the sky. As the tunnel fills with flame tubes, she starts to scream. She suddenly starts to drift upward into a dazzling light as the ceiling suddenly collapses. On a rock outside, beneath a clear blue sky, she awakens. She has a healed foot. She sees Nina there. Lisa queries if she's passed away. Lisa is informed by Nina that despite numerous deaths, she is now secure. Lisa queries her on her obligations. The word, live, is uttered by Nina. They can be seen amid a stunning alien landscape when the camera pans higher. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you've subscribed and turn on the notification for more videos.